hello guys uh, good evening my name is uh, kuryeshan joshi i am currently pursuing first sem llm in central university of kerala okay the uh, topic i am going to review is control of hazardous space in india so before moving on to the core subject i'll just brief through the waste management in india so what is waste simply put we can say that a waste is a by product of human activity it is not a realistic meaning it's only a sarcastic meaning because most most probably waste is created by the activity of humans let's say from uh, eating a candy to launching a rocket to the space so in every human activity we can see in one way or another the production of a waste also by the increase of industries the waste generation has increased through the ages when we come to the situation in india we know that india is a highly populated country with a huge population density also so the issue of waste generation and waste management has to be tackled effectively in india so for that we don't have a single legislation for waste management we only have an umbrella legislation that is the environmental protection act of 1986 it is through this environmental protection act through a provision in environmental protection act the other rules which enable the government to control the waste is enacted so that particular section is section 6 of environmental protection act 1986 it empowers the ministry of environment forest and climate change to make rules to reduce waste in india so when we look at waste management we can say that uh, basically three principles and six six rules are ap applicable in case of india what are the three principles these three principles are already well known for us three principles are first one is the uh, sustainable development the idea of sustainable development second principle is the idea of precautionary principle and the third principle is the polluter pays principle we know what these principles means sustainable development means that both environment and the industries should coexist we cannot uh, give importance to one and we cannot neglect the other so both industry and environment should coexist together when we come to the next principle that is polluter pays principle we know that the person who pollutes the environment should pay for clearing that pollution or for for making it in the in a way which it existed earlier the coming to the third principle that is precautionary principle that is pollution should be uh, effectively reduced even before the happening of a pollution that is even before a waste is created the uh, production of waste should be reduced now these three principles give way to six rules which are enacted by the indian government for reducing waste so these six rules are basically dealing with hazardous waste biomedical waste battery waste e waste uh, etc uh so we will deal with each of these rules one by one the first rule is hazardous and other waste management and transboundary movement rules 2016 so this is an important rule when we consider the consider our uh, net syllabus because in our net syllabus only the hazardous waste management is prescribed but questions are asked from other waste management rules also so we'll have to have a brief idea about that rules also but this particular rule is very important as far as our net preparation is concerned so when we so what is a hazardous waste you can read from the slide a hazardous waste is any waste which by virtue of its physical chemical reactive toxic flammable explosive or corrosive characteristics causes danger or is likely to cause danger to health or environment whether alone or when in contact with other waste or substances so this definition is given by the ministry of environment and this is the 
basic definition for hazardous waste. So simply put, we can say that hazardous waste is something which causes danger or is likely to cause danger to the health or environment by virtue of its physical, chemical, reactive, toxic, flammable, explosive or corrosive characteristics. So that is a hazardous waste. When we look at the uh, hierarchy of waste, hazardous waste comes first because it is the most dangerous among all the other kind of waste. So when we look at the uh, history of the legislation for controlling hazardous waste in India, the first rule which was enacted to control hazardous waste in India is the Hazardous Waste Management and Handling Rules 1989. So this is the first rule which was enacted to reduce hazardous waste. That is Hazardous Waste Management and Handling Rules 1989. So in the year 1989 itself, India started dealing with hazardous waste. So this particular rule was amended in the years 2000 and 2003. And later, a case that is Research Foundation for Science versus Union of India and others. This case came up and this case was particularly dealing with the import of hazardous waste from other countries to India. That is, simply put, that is the transboundary movement of hazardous waste. Transboundary movement means the movement from one particular country to another country. So, this case was all about transboundary movement of hazardous waste. And in this case, Supreme Court held that there is a convention, that is Basel Convention. So this Basel Convention dealt with hazardous and other waste management and transboundary movement. So Supreme Court held that India is a signatory to this particular Basel Convention. So Supreme Court held that the current hazardous waste management and handling rules 1989 should be amended in such a way to include the relevant provisions of Basel Convention. So for that, according to the instruction of the Supreme Court in the case of Research Foundation for Science versus Union of India and others, to include the relevant provisions of Basel Convention, the new hazardous waste management handling and transboundary movement rules 2008 was enacted. So in this rule, the provisions with respect to hazardous waste in Basel Convention was incorporated. And later this particular rule, that is the rule which came in 2008, was amended in the years 2009 and 2010. But currently, the rule which is applicable to India is the very latest rule, that is hazardous and other waste management and transboundary movement rules 2016. So altogether, we can say that there are mainly three rules going through the history. The first rule came in 1989, second rule came in, 19, in 2008, and the third rule came in 2016. So the current rule which is applicable to India is the hazardous and other waste management and transboundary movement rules 2016. Now we look at what are the salient features of this particular rule. So uh, when we look at this uh, rule, the first thing which strikes us is that the waste management is, uh, the, uh, the provision for waste management is included in a hierarchical form. That is the most effective way to prevent this hazardous waste is given the first preference, that is prevention. Prevention of hazardous waste is given first preference. Then comes the next one, that is minimization of hazardous waste. Then comes reuse, then recycling, then recovery, co-processing, and then safe disposal. So the most effective way to reduce hazardous waste is given first preference in this tool. So, whenever there is a chance to prevent hazardous waste, we should do that. If that is not possible, we should go to the next possible prevention method, that is minimization. If that is also not possible, we should go to the next one, that is reuse. And finally, if none of these are possible, we should follow the method for safe disposal of hazardous waste. So, that is what the rule states. Moving on to the other salient features. Uh, one among the salient features is that the basic necessity of infrastructure to safeguard the health and environment from waste processing industry is prescribed as a standard operating procedure. That is, the industry which is producing the waste should have a basic infrastructure to safeguard the health and environment. That is what is what what this particular 
idea is all about. That is the industry which produces the waste should have an infrastructure to safeguard the health and environment of others. Now moving on to the other salient feature that is there is a single window clearance for setting up of hazardous waste disposal facility and imports of other waste. That is uh, earlier the uh, clearance window was divided into many many different uh, windows. That is uh, if at all we get the uh, we get clearance from one agency we will have to go to other agency for getting clearance. But now we have a single window clearance for setting up of the waste disposal facility and import of other waste. So it is only with respect to the setting up of waste disposal facility and import of other waste, waste only. There is no single window clearance for waste management as such. There is only single window clearance in case of hazardous waste disposal facility and import of other waste. Another salient feature is the approval for co-processing of hazardous waste to recover energy and this has been streamlined. That is, as I have told earlier uh, about the single window clearance, that same thing is applicable here also. That is for the co-processing of hazardous waste to recover the energy, that approval has been streamlined. So that is all about the salient feature of the hazardous waste management rules. Now we look at plastic waste management rules 2016. So what is a plastic waste? We, we know what a plastic waste is, but this is the official definition of the Ministry of Environment and Forest. So according to them, plastic waste is any plastic discarded after use or after that their intended use is over. That is basically it is any plastic which is discarded after, uh, after it is being used. We know that the indiscriminate uh, disposal of plastic is a major threat to the environment and among that plastic carry bags are the biggest contributors of listed waste. That is plastic carry bags are the biggest contributors of the waste which are thrown away. So this particular rule is all about controlling the plastic carry bags and controlling the plastic waste which are in form of plastic carry bags. So uh, this act is also a new act. The earlier act was the plastic waste management and handling rules, 2000, uh, pardon, rules. So this rule is a new rule. The uh, plastic waste management and handling rules 2011 was the uh, earlier rule. And this new rule is enacted in the year 2016 and it has replaced the earlier plastic waste management and handling rules 2011. So what is the purpose of this rule? The basic purpose of this rule is to give trust to plastic waste minimization, source segregation, recycling, which involves waste pickers, recyclers and waste processors in collection of plastic waste and adopt polluter waste, polluter pay principle for the sustainability of waste management system. You can read that from this slide. So basically the idea of, I have told you about three basic principles. So all these three principles are applicable in this particular rule. That is the uh, sustainable development, the idea of polluter principle and the idea of precautionary principle. Precautionary principle comes into application in case of waste minimization. That is minimizing the waste before it creates a pollution. So before it is thrown, the waste should be minimized. That is the idea of precautionary principle. And the polluter pay principle is already included in this particular rule and sustainability of waste management system. It is in par with the idea of sustainable development. So we will look at the salient features of this particular rule. Uh, one of the important features is that it extends the scope of this rule to uh, beyond municipal jurisdiction to include rural regions. So the first, the earlier uh, plastic waste management rule contained only provisions which were applicable to municipal jurisdiction only. That is the uh, areas which are belonging to a municipality only was only covered under that particular rule. But now government is well aware of the fact that Plastic waste is also produced in rural regions and rural region is also included within the scope of this particular rule. Now another salient feature is that it includes the 
obligation of producers and generators in plastic waste management system. That is, the producers and generators of plastic waste has an obligation to control the plastic waste and to uh, uh, and in plastic waste management. So they'll have to implement a collect back mechanism for plastic garbage. That is, they'll have to collect the plastic waste which is produced by them. So when they are producing this plastic and when waste is produced as a uh, byproduct, they'll have to collect it back and they'll have to recycle it. So that is the idea of polluter waste principle. Now moving on to the third salient feature, that is to implement the gathering of plastic waste management charge through pre-registration of plastic carry bags or multi-layered packing products, producers, importers and vendors. This is also in par with the idea of polluter waste principle. That is the plastic waste, the gathering of plastic waste management charge should be done through pre-registration of the people who are producing this plastic carry bags. That is the producers, importers, vendors, etc. Now moving on to the fourth salient feature that is to encourage the use of plastic trash for road building in accordance with Indian Road Congress recommendation. That is, we can use plastic to build roads. So these roads can withstand flood, uh, the running water, etc. And we can use plastic for building roads. And also we can use plastic for energy recovery, for producing oil, for uh, producing other energy uh, sources, etc. So we can use plastic for all these things. So this rule contains provisions to encourage the use of plastic for all these purposes. Now moving on to the uh, third rule, that is Biomedical Waste Management Rules 2016. So what is a biomedical waste? Biomedical waste is any waste which is generated during the diagnosis treatment or immunization of human beings or animals or research activities pertaining there to or in production or testing of biological or in health camps. So basically biomedical waste means a waste which is produced in a uh, biological or a medical facility. That is it may be a, a, a health camp, it may be a hospital, it may be a laboratory etc. So the uh, next point that is it is applicable to all persons who generate, collect, receive, store, transport, treat, dispose or handle biomedical waste in the in any form including hospitals as I have told earlier, hospital, nursing homes, clinic, dispensaries, etc. So basically any facility which is biological or medical in nature. So any waste is produced in any of these facilities, it will be, it will be considered as a biomedical waste. So what are the salient features of this particular act? The first feature is the segregation of waste at, at source. So we know that biomedical waste contains different elements. So there may be plastic elements, there may be sharp objects, there may be uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, waste from human body, there may be body parts itself. So these different kind of waste should be segregated at the source itself. That is at the particular facility itself, these uh, waste have to be segregated. The uh, second salient feature is the pre-treatment of laboratory and highly infectious waste. So there may be highly infectious waste or laboratory waste. For example, we we are all well known, of, well aware of the fact that the coronavirus was spread from China from a laboratory. So if the pre-treatment of laboratory and highly infectious waste was done, sometime we we cannot say for sure, but sometime sometimes. We, we could have prevented the uh, whole pandemic itself. So the pre-treatment of laboratory and highly infectious waste is an important feature of this rule. The other salient feature is that the collection and storage of segregated waste in color-coded bags or containers or bins. So there are different color-coded bags for collecting and storing this different kinds of waste. That is, it may be uh, human body parts, it may be plastic waste, it may be sharp objects, etc. So the color code uh, will uh, be uh, dealt with in the next slide. So I will deal with that later. Now, now moving on to the next salient feature. The intramural transportation from generation state, uh, site to central storage area. So the waste which is produced in a facility is transported to a central storage area. 
and from that central storage area this waste is uh, disposed of or it is treated so that is the whole process which is involved in biomedical waste that is first the waste is segregated and then it is transported from the generation site to central storage area and there it is treated or disposed now moving on to the other salient feature that is storage at central facility uh, as i have told earlier it is stored in the central uh, facility and it is disposed in the central facility itself another thing treatment of waste the waste is treated in the central facility another salient feature the final disposal through central biomedical waste treatment facility that is the central uh, in the central storage area itself there is a central biomedical waste treatment facility in that facility the waste is either treated or it is finally disposed of so these are the salient features of the act and this is the uh, segregation of waste in color coded bags so in the yellow bags we include infectious waste bandage gauze cotton or any other thing in contact with body fluid human body parts placenta etc so in yellow bags we Uh, put waste which are related to human excretions or human body parts so any part whether it is placenta a leg a hand anything the waste which which is produced in a uh, biomedical facility is uh, thrown in the yellow bag is uh, stored in the yellow bag now coming to the red bag the plastic waste such as catheter injection syringe tubings iv bottles etc so in this uh, particular uh, bag the uh, waste materials which are um, in the form of plastic glass etc these things are stored in red bags that is catheter injection syringe tubings iv bottles etc moving on to the another type of am i audible hello Yes yes, yes 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 hello yes audible aan hello am i audible yes 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 audible aan hello okay moving on to the yes, third kind of uh, bag that is blue bag in this bag all types of glass bottles and broken glass articles are stored that is and also outdated and discarded medicines are stored in this bag so all the glass items and discarded medicines are stored in blue bags now coming to the black bag the needles which are without syringes blades and sharp and all metal articles are stored in black box that is all the sharp materials needles etc are stored in black box so coming to the next rule that is e waste management rules 2016 so e waste is basically an ele electric and or electronic equipment whole or in part discarded as waste by the consumer or bulk consumer as well as rejects from manufacturing re refurbishment and repair processes so basically these are electrical and electronic waste so that is e waste e means electrical and electronic so electrical and electronic waste which are produced from the or which are discarded as waste from the consumer or bulk consumer is simply called e waste so this particular rule e waste management rule 2016 has replaced the e waste rules 2011 so the earlier rule which was applicable in india was e waste rule 2011 and the e waste management rule 2016 has replaced this particular rule now uh, the uh, the object of this rule is to address the leakage of e waste to informal sector it is applicable to every producer consumer or bulk consumer collection center dismantler or recycler of e waste which is uh, involved in the manufacture sale purchase or processing of electrical and electronic equipment so it is applicable to every person who is dealing with electrical waste now moving on to the salient feature of this act cfl lamps and other mercury containing equipments are brought under the rule in the earlier rule cfl and other mercury containing equipments were not were not included but in the new rule of 2016 cfl lamps and mercury containing equipments are included and also the producers are made responsible for the collection of e waste and for its exchange so 
here also the principle of polluter by principle is applicable that is the producers are made responsible for the collection of e waste now moving on to the other salient feature that is bulk consumer must collect the e waste and hand them over to authorized recyclers that is the bulk consumers should collect the e waste and they should hand it over to the authorized recyclers that is the cons consumers or the customers are also given a responsibility to handle e waste properly now emphasis on various producers to have separate producer responsibility organization and ensure e waste collection here also producers are given a responsibility to ensure the e waste collection and state government will ensure the safety health and skill development of the workers who are involved in dismantling and recycling operation so basically this act this rule deals with the uh, polluter pays principle as well as the uh, responsibility of state government to control e waste now moving on to the another uh, rule that is construction and demolition waste management rules 2016 so construction and demolition waste basically means the waste comprising of building materials debris and rubble resulting from the construction remodeling repair or demolition of any civil structure so that is basically the uh, waste which is uh, produced from the construction or demolition of any civil structure that is any building so the waste which is uh, uh, created from the construction or demolition of a building is basically called a construction and demolition waste the uh, idea of this rule or the uh, the motive of this rule is to promote the utilization of the use of construction and demolition waste and for segregation recovery reuse and recycle at the source so uh, apart from other waste this construction and demolition waste can be used for for the uh, uh, the construction of other buildings and the production of other other uh, materials so this particular rule deals with the utilization of construction and demolition waste for the uh, the uh, construction of other buildings other uh, production of other materials etc and also for the segregation recovery reuse and recycle of the construction and demolition waste so it is also applicable to every person who is dealing with the construction and demolition of buildings now moving on to the salient feature it segregates the waste into four categories that is concrete and soil the first category second category comes uh, that is steel and wood third category plastic and bricks and fourth category mortar it segregates waste into these four categories and uh, large generators must prepare an environment management plan that is the large generators who are constructing and demolishing a civil structure should prepare an environment management plan so that the construction and demolition waste are managed and uh, controlled properly and also the local authorities are required to use 10 to 20% of materials from uh, construction and demolition waste in municipal and government contracts so when a municipal or government contract is given they should ensure that 10 to 20% of materials smeared from construction and demolition waste is used in the construction of that particular civil structure so another uh, salient feature is that service providers and contractors are required to remove and prepare waste management plan for waste generated in their jurisdiction within 6 months so within 6 months they should give a waste management plan and they are required to remove that particular waste within 6 months also the concerned department of state government is required to provide land for storage processing and recycling of waste so uh, a state government is also having a responsibility to reduce this construction and demolition waste moving on to the last rule that is batteries management and handling rules 2001 so basically the battery in this particular rule means a lead acid battery which is a source of electrical energy and contains lead material so lead material Uh, lead acid battery contains material which are toxic to the nature that is uh, it contains a material like mercury lead cadmium sulfuric acid lithium percolate etc which are toxic and corrosive materials and that can uh, uh, that can affect the environment or health of a person so it is also applicable to every manufacturer importer reconditioner assembler dealer recycler auctioneer consumer and bulk consumer involved in the manufacture processing sale purchase and roll of batteries or components that is it is applicable to everyone who deals with batteries in a large quantity 
that is a bulk consumer uh, a, a manufacturer reconditioner importer etc so move, moving on to the salient features the manufacturer importer assembler and reconditioner has to file a half yearly return of their sales and buy back to sbbc that is state pollution control board that is the person who manufactures manufactures a battery or an importer or, a, or an assembler or a reconditioner they'll have to file a half yearly return that is they'll have to give a return about their sale of battery how many batteries they are they have sold in a particular year and also how many batteries they have bought back that is if a battery becomes useless they should buy that battery back and they should give a new battery so that is the whole purpose of this rule that is the recycling of battery should take place um, in the source itself that is the manufacturer or importer or assembler should buy back the battery and they should give a new battery so that is the basic idea of this rule another salient feature is that the importer and recycler have to obtain registration so a registration from the uh, uh, particular authority is required for importers and recyclers also all consumers shall deposit used batteries with the dealer that is what i have said earlier that is the dealer should collect the batteries which are useless and they should give a new battery to the consumer if they are paying for a new battery so the old battery should be collected by the dealer and they should file a half yearly return to the state pollution control board now another salient feature is that prior customs clearance is needed for importing batteries for recycling that is if if at all any person is importing batteries for re recycling that battery in india they should obtain a prior customs clearance so these are the salient features of uh, the uh, batteries management and handling rules so these are the uh, important rules which are dealing with the management of hazardous waste in india now uh, we look at the some of the issues faced in waste management in india the uh, first and foremost issue is that there is no civil legislation as we have seen there are a plethora of rules and these rules are dealing with different kinds of waste a particular one rule deals with the uh, battery uh, the uh, battery waste another rules deals with bi biomedical waste another rule deals with um, e waste so uh, there is no single legislation for management of waste as a whole also a person who is starting a business or a factory will have to get separate authorization from different authorities that is these all these uh, rules uh, provide uh, uh, for different authorities for giving authorization and they'll have to uh, a person who is dealing with this waste should have to get separate authorization from different authorities also uh, there is a need of single license for waste disposal uh currently there is no single license for waste disposal license is to be obtained from different authorities for different uh, kind of waste so as, uh, if a single license is provided for waste disposal it would be helpful for the owners of the factory as well as development of industry in india another issue is that unreasonable delay from state pollution control board offices so so whenever there is an inquiry or whenever there is a uh, visit to an industry uh, they will it will take a lot of time and uh, delay from the officials another issue is with respect to the review of status of application so if an application is given to start an industry or to start a waste disposal unit uh, there is no mechanism to review the status of that application also there is no uniform set of condition for the setting up of a waste disposal unit or an industry so uh, different uh, industries dealing with different kinds of waste have different uh, have to uh, undertake different kinds of conditions and they'll have to fulfill these conditions separately so that is another issue also there is a lack of professional environmental audit and there is no reliable statistics on exact number of prosecution and authorization uh, in the hands of pollution control board so pollution control board does not have a statistics on exact number of people who are prosecuted uh, for uh, the uh, violation of the rules and also how many uh, authorizations are given to uh, a person a, a particular uh, in a particular year so these uh, sta uh, statistics are not available uh, with the uh, pollution control board so these are the basic issues which are faced in waste management so um, basically our uh, topic is over um, now i'll deal with uh, bibliography uh, first of all um, we can refer the uh, book of arihant 
dealing with uh, NDA UGC net law paper two. So that's a, 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 a good book. It deals with uh, all this topic in a brief manner and also the previous questions and the uh, other kinds of uh, MCQs dealing with that particular topic is provided after that topic. So it is helpful for us to study that particular topic. Also, um, I refer to the website of Central Pollution Control Board uh, for getting um, new insights about the new rules which are uh, coming into force. That is, uh, when we look at the, uh, the new uh, plastic waste uh, management rules, uh, now there is a notification that the uh, plastic which are uh, to be used in a, uh, a single time, that is, single time use plastics are to be banned in India. And I think by uh, December uh, 2022, the, um, uh, the uh, prescribed microns of plastic will be raised to 120 microns. So now it is 50 microns. It will be uh, raised to 80 microns by September 2021. And it will be raised to uh, 120 microns by December 2022. Uh, another thing I have referred is the uh, article of uh, legalserviceindia.com, also uh, lowarbit.com, also uh, the uh, ipleaders.com. So these articles are also helpful to study this particular topic. Now we'll move to the uh, questions. Um, there are basically uh, two previous year questions. Uh, it is not uh, exhaustively uh, from this uh, particular topic, but there is mention about the particular topic. So when we look at this question, uh, match the following. It's, it came in uh, January 2017 um, net examination. So um, in the uh, first list, we can see hazardous waste material. So hazardous waste material is provided in the first uh, list. That is option. Uh, that is as, uh, option B. Also in the uh, second list, we can see so option three, Research Foundation for Science versus Union of India. I have told in my uh, review class that uh, in the case of Research Foundation for Science versus Union of India, Supreme Court said that the uh, research waste material handling should be dealt according to the Basel Convention. So uh, that is, uh, so the uh, right option is three. So D3, uh, only one option comes with D3, that is option B. Option B comes with uh, the particular set of option that is D3. Now, uh, in that option, A is 2. That is, public liability is uh, mentioned in the case of MC Meta versus Union of India. Sustainable development is mentioned in the case of Narmada Bachavo Andolan versus Union of India. Also, wildlife protection is dealt with State of Bihar versus Murat Ali Khan. And hazardous waste material is dealt with Research Foundation of, of Science for Science versus Union of India. So, if we know that uh, hazardous waste material is dealt with Research Foundation for Science versus Union of India, we can easily crack this question because only one option comes with that particular set of combination that is uh, hazardous waste material and Research Foundation for Science versus Union of India, that is option B. So we can rightly say that option B is the correct answer. Now moving on to another previous question that is the question which came in uh, June 2018 uh, net examination. Uh, this is also not an ex exhaustive uh, question uh, it contains the uh, the topics from other uh, uh, other uh, topics also but it deals with uh, hazardous waste management also uh, in this we can see uh, in option d uh, in list one option d transboundary movement of hazardous waste and their disposal so Transboundary movement of hazardous waste and their disposal is provided as option D in list one. And in list two, we can see that as option one, there is Basel Convention. So I have mentioned about Basel Convention. Basel Convention, basically, India is a signatory to Basel Convention and it deals with the transboundary movement of hazardous waste and their disposal. So uh, D matches with one. So that particular combination can be seen in two options, that is in B and C. So either the right answer will be option B or the right answer will be option C. So now uh, we can uh, look at other options. Uh, first, uh, A, no state has the has a right to use or permit the use of its territory so as to cause injury by fumes in the territory of another. So that is obviously trial uh, smelter case. 
we know that is uh, no state has the right to use or permit the use of its territory so as to cause injury by fumes in the territory of another so that is trial spell case that is a2 so a2 comes in in option c in option c a2 b3 b is economic benefit must sustainably substantially exceed its environmental cost that so that uh, option uh, is linked with environmental impact assessment uh, that is uh, b3 then the next combination is c4 that is uh, present generation has no right to deplete all the existing forest and leave nothing for the uh, next and future generation so that is intergenerational equity that is c4 c4 and d1 so the right option is option c a2 b3 c4 and d1 so uh, these two previous year questions were found now moving on to other kinds of mcqs when was hazardous waste management act enacted in india i have told earlier that the hazardous waste management act was firstly enacted in india in the year 1989 so the right option is option b 1989 the next question uh, local authorities are ordered to use how much percent of construction and demolition waste this also i have mentioned local authorities are ordered to use 10 to 20 percent of construction and demolition waste so the right option is option c now uh, match the following yellow bags red bags blue bags and black bags so uh, i have mentioned this also uh, in this uh, i have already uh, shown you the yes i have already shown you the uh, segregation of waste in color coded bags yellow bag deals with placenta red bag deals with catheter blue bag deals with discarded medicines and black bag deals with uh, sharp materials so the right okay so the uh, right option will be a4 a option a will be the right option that is a4 yellow bags deals with infectious waste placenta red bag deals with used catheters blue bags deals with outdated medicine bottles and black bags deals with infected metal shafts so that is the right option now moving on to the other uh, uh, question that is e-waste doesn't include i have told you that the uh, latest uh, rule includes cfl lamps and mercury containing equipment so that too can be excluded then computer and other appliances are already included in e-waste so the right option will be option d demolition waste demolition waste is included in in which rule in demolition waste is included in construction and demolition waste management rules 2016 in this rule the uh, waste from the construction or demolition of any civil structure is included under this rule construction and demolition waste management rules 2016 now uh, okay so uh, ah, there is another question which of the following is wrong regarding plastic waste management rules 2016 first option is recycled plastic is not to be used in edible packing uh, plastic of thickness less than 50 microns is prohibited only registered users will get raw materials plastic sachet for tobacco and good car allowed okay so we know that uh, recycled plastic is not to be used in edible packing that is uh, true that is a true statement the uh, question is to pick the wrong statement so the first statement is a true statement second statement plastic of thickness less than 50 microns is prohibited yes plastic of thickness less than 50 microns is prohibited so that's a uh, right statement third statement only registered users will get raw materials yes only registered users will get raw materials for uh, producing uh, plastic uh, uh, objects that is also a true statement and uh, only uh, uh, for that is plastic sachet for tobacco and good car allowed no Plastic sachet is not allowed for tobacco and gutka. So the uh, right answer is only for that is the fourth option is the wrong statement. That is plastic sachet for tobacco and gutka are not allowed. So that is all about my topic. Uh, thank you. Uh, compensation for certain losses concerned. See here, what is the perspective from which we look at? 
corrective justice of course that is a concept of corrective justice but not from this perspective 